Hi guys. In my last video I built this Panzer 3N from Tacom and in this video I'm going to be finishing the kit by painting and weathering it. And this particular kit was very kindly supplied to me by Hobby Link Japan and there's a link in the description if you want to get yours there too. So this is how we left the kit at the end of the last video. And the first thing I did was give the tank a coat of Tamiya Grey Primer and then a base layer of Tamiya XF60 dark yellow and I lightened that with a mix of XF57 buff. And that mix was approximately 50-50. And that mix will provide us with the yellow base coat which we need regardless of the uh, scheme we choose. So the instructions include four schemes. The first one is this one here from the 2nd Panzer Division in Kursk, July 1943 with these kind of very distinctive uh, green spots. The second is also from July 1943 in Kursk and it has these uh, quite distinctive uh, side skirt stripes, diagonal stripes there of the dark green and the dark brown. Then we have this scheme here from June 1945 in Oslo and finally, from Italy in May 1945, this hard-edged camo scheme. Of those schemes, my favourite are the two Kursk schemes. And of those, I like the green spots, the first one the most. So that's what I decided to go with. So I haven't shown the airbrushing here because my setup makes it quite hard to film the airbrushing. But I airbrushed on some NATO green mixed 50-50 with some olive green. And with some thin paint and some low pressure, I was able to get those marks on there without too much spluttering and splattering around the edges. Once that was done I turned my attention to the detail painting. This is a small trick I picked up from Panzermeister 36s channel, which is to use a thin sheet of paper underneath items you're painting as a kind of mask to prevent you from getting paint on the main tank. Normally I find the protective sheet that comes with the decals is perfect for this. I gave the exhaust a coat of the same steel grey colour ready for rusting later on. So after applying a semi-gloss coat to the tank, I added the decals using some Tamiya mark set to soften them up a little bit. And one of the things I liked about the uh, colour scheme I went for is it has some slightly more interesting decals than the others. It has these shields with the eagles on them and a number on the back, which the other ones don't. To give the exhaust a warm effect, I sponged on some of the yellow base colour. I did this to make it look like the exhaust had been painted yellow and then the paint had worn away with the heat. And then I used these three products from AK Interactive, the light, the medium and the dark rust deposits. I started with the light and applied it fairly heavily to the exhaust. And then I applied the medium. And finally, only in small amounts, the dark. And 
I wanted to do some chipping on this tank but not too much, I'm not a huge fan of chipping to be honest. So I took a sponge and some more of the base colour and I applied those chips around the edges of the raised points, particularly these hatches here on the engine deck. And I thought the corners of the uh, mud guards would also be a place where might, there might be some chipping. For the side skirts, while they were still on the card I used to paint them on, I hand brushed some streaks and some scratches using the base colour. And then I took a dark brown colour and in just a few of those larger chips I applied a small amount of paint in the centre to look like corrosion. The next step was to apply a pin wash using some oil paints. This is the Abtai Lung uh, Shadow Brown colour, thinned with enamel thinners. And you can see as I drop it in the recesses, it forms some nice fake shadows in those. This looks particularly good I think on these engine hatches and these hinges. I made sure I applied the pin wash on all the details, including the suspension details. On the drive sprockets the teeth would be in contact with the tracks and therefore polished so I painted those carefully with some X11 chrome. To break up the colour on both the side skirts and the main vehicle I used an oil dot filter technique. As the name suggests, this involves putting dots of oil paint of various colours onto the surface. So here you can see I used a white, a couple of shades of yellow and some brown colours. 
and then you blend those in with a small amount of enamel thinners in a vertical motion and that leaves us with some subtle streaks For the horizontal surfaces on the tank I used a circular blending motion because obviously there's no uh, vertical there. And the effect is subtle but it does make a difference. And then I took some of the darker oil paints and I tried to blend them into some of the recesses. as well as making some streaking effects on the side of the vehicle. I took some darker oil paints and tried to blend them in around certain large areas, basically to make them look like accumulated dust and dirt. And this blending is done with either a dry brush are one that's only extremely lightly dampened in thinners. The next step was to fit the road wheels and I had to use quite a lot of force here to get these all the way on. I don't remember it being so difficult when they were unpainted but perhaps that thin layer of paint made all the difference and it was quite difficult to get some of those road wheels on. But of course they need to go all the way on otherwise the tracks won't be uh, perfectly aligned. So I always struggle with Lincoln length tracks because I don't know whether to build them first or paint them first or what. In this case I decided to build them in sections. So I took the individual links around the drive sprocket and glued them in place. I left the larger sections until later. I base painted each section in a dark grey colour and then I used my three rust deposit colours from AK starting with the light rust, thinned it down slightly and applied it to the tracks and added a small amount of speckling as well. And for some reason my video of this process seems to have disappeared. But the next step was to speckle on some medium rust colour and once that was dry to speckle on smaller amounts of the dark rust colour. And that left me with some tracks which look like this more weathered than my usual tracks and I dry brushed on some silver to bring out the uh, worn contact points there. The next step was to fit the tracks and the wheels. I decided to do this before any weathering on the side of the lower hull mainly because most of this will be covered by the side skirts anyway. These tracks were quite fiddly to fit and on one of the sides I had to take out an extra track link to make them fit correctly. But you can see they look pretty decent so far. However there is a clear difference between the very rusted and worn tracks and the very clean side of the hull. So that's what I tried to address using some burnt umber pigment mixed with a small amount of thinners to keep it quite a thick mixture. And I applied that on the lower half of the hull. This looks very dark but it will dry to a much lighter colour. In fact back to the original pigment colour. I put it on very messily. And then once I had the bulk of the mixture in the right place, I used a brush in some clean enamel thinners 
to blend the edges of that pigment. this still looks really quite messy but a great way to reduce that uh, sharp edging even after blending is to use a speckling technique and here I've thinned the pigment mixture down and I'm now flicking it from the front of the vehicle trying to concentrate over that edge to blend the edge in And I filled in the gaps in the tracks with the same pigment mixture. And you can see here once that pigment has dried it's returned to a much lighter colour. And the only thing left to do then was to add a second layer of pigments. In this case I didn't apply it directly to the model with a brush but instead I used that speckling technique again and I'm not trying to cover all of the older pigments, I'm trying to get a, a layered system going on here. And hopefully that lighter colour gives the impression of drying mud over the top. And there were a couple of other minor details I added. So for example I stuck a few of these leaves in various recesses, mainly on the top of the vehicle. And I highlighted some of the raised points, especially the bolts and the rivets, with a lighter shade of the base colour. Finally it was time to add the side skirts. These were a little bit difficult to fit, and you had to be careful not to damage the rails which hold them in place. And at this point I deliberately hadn't weathered them because I realised that manhandling them on would probably damage the weathering. So once they were in place, then I did the same speckling technique with the two pigments up the side of the side skirts there. And with that done, the model was complete. Before I show you the images of the final model, let me take a moment to say thank you again to Hobbylink Japan for supplying this kit. If you want to get your model from there, there is a link in the description below. And of course, many thanks to my Patreon supporters, whose kind support really helps this channel grow and continue. Honestly guys, I couldn't do it without you, so thank you so much for your help and support, it's much appreciated. Okay, and here are those images of the final model. Well there we go guys, that was my painting and weathering of the Tacom Panzer 3 N variant. I hope you've enjoyed these two videos. 
As I said in the last video, I had a lot of fun building the kit and uh, I was really impressed by the detail that was uh, included. Weathering the kit was also great fun, so I hope you've enjoyed watching the video as much as I did making it. And my next video is going to be a full build, review, painting and weathering of this uh, early war kit from Amusing Hobby. So guys, thank you once again for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. And in the meantime, perhaps one of these four videos will be of interest to you.